What's up, everybody? This is Trey Biddy coming to you from Hog Sports Studio. That's H A W G Sports.com. Today, we're going to talk about Razorback football, basketball, baseball, a lot of stuff going on with spring football. Starting back up today, we're actually going to get to watch the whole practice. Basketball just ending, baseball team plays today, and quite a bit of activity lately in recruiting. We'll get to it all on Hog Sports Live. So today's a pretty exciting day just because the entire practice is open. Now, we've we've been able to watch some of the practices, but it's just the first 20, 25 minutes or so. And really all that has entailed is some special teams work, some individual stuff, some one-on-one. We've seen a little bit of live stuff. You know, they do the Arkansas drill and stuff like that. So that's been fun. But um, today – and we did get to watch probably – 30 minutes or so of the scrimmage uh, Saturday before last, before spring break. So that was entertaining. But really to be able to sit out there and take in the whole practice, I think is going to be uh, eye-opening. We always say at Hog Sports, when we get more access, that's when we feel our coverage separates from from the pack. Uh, we just we go all out. So me and Danny, Danny West is going to join us here in a little bit. We'll, we'll be at practice. Pete Roulier will be at practice also. Um, I want to go ahead and uh, encourage everybody to start getting some questions in for Danny. There has been a lot of activity and recruiting going on uh, since spring break lifted. So go ahead and get some questions in. We'll, we'll fire some off at him. Ask me some questions, uh, you know, football, basketball, baseball, whatever you want, and we'll get to all of that stuff. Uh, also, want to encourage you to go ahead and like the video. Throw us a thumbs up, uh, a funny face, whatever you want to do. Share, comment, follow. Uh, but like the video. If you're listening on podcast, uh, be sure to subscribe to the channel and throw us five stars. All right, I'm going to go ahead and reach out to Danny West here. Let's bring his graphic up here. Let's get Danny's graphic going. Give Danny on the horn. Paging Daniel West. What's happening? What's up, brother? Uh, doing a little work, trying to get ready for football practice. That's a start. This evening, That's so. a start. Yeah. yeah. I know you hate <laughs> What's that. What's up? Oh, not much. We're just uh, we're on Hawk Sports Live. You know, what do you think of the show so far, Danny? We've had uh, we've had pretty good response with it, and uh, the engagement's been great. I think we'll keep it up. What do you think? I think uh, you need to keep working on Photoshop. Maybe make yourself <laughs> a little more appealing. Yeah. Yeah. Out well, of that. I was thinking about it's just taking good. your picture off there entirely. <laughs> yeah, buddy. No, I like it. I like the setup. It's it's quick and easy for me. Yeah. Hell, all I got to do is answer the phone, you know, and yeah. I'm all there. So that's nice. I'll let you it? do all the work. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, a lot of activity. I want to jump right into recruiting. Uh, a lot of activity going on. I guess seven new offers went out on Monday alone, and uh, I don't. I guess maybe some more today. I don't know. Yeah, another one this morning. So, yeah, the coaches got back to work yesterday, put out a bunch of new offers. You've got kids lining up visits over the next couple of weekends here. So, yeah, there's been a lot. I think there were six yesterday by mm-hmm. my count. Another new offer this morning. I, I'll tell you one that stands out to me is Marcus Burris. Is a For all of our listeners and watchers down in Texarkana, he's a kid at Pleasant Grove High School, mm-hmm. 2021 defensive end. He's a teammate of Landon Jackson, obviously the big, depending on which uh, site you look at, hopefully 24-7. He's a four-star. Uh, Landon is obviously a big-time talent, nationally known uh, defensive end, and this is his teammate there. So good to get in early. They, they're they the first team to offer Marcus, which surprised me because when I look at him on film, I think, man, he's uh, surely he's got a dozen offers, mm-hmm. you know, but – so a quick start there. You had some big news last night. Takias Crawford confirmed yeah. with us. I wanted to get into that, the big uh, fella. Yeah. Yeah. He uh, set his official visit date for April t- uh, April 12th through the 14th, which uh, for those of you that keep up with this type of thing, mm-hmm. a, a couple of those days there, it, it's still row week at Arkansas. So a good time to be taking your row official week. visit. I remember yeah. it well. I remember yeah, it so well. I guess Fidel's that, got that's, Viking that's nice with all the Fidel's. Catfish Row. Yeah. I, I remember some of the names. Bacchanelli. Um, I remember some of the names. I was I was Greek back in the day at the U of A. Hey, uh, wh- where does Arkansas stand with him? I mean, obviously getting an official visit is huge, especially an early one like that. It's usually a good sign. But uh, I think a lot of people kind of thought after the big visit weekend that he might jump on board. He had decommitted from Baylor, recently got bumped up to I think number 66 player in the country, something like that. 69, yeah, 69. overall, yeah. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, I think you're still in the driver's seat if you're Arkansas right now. you got to be feeling really good about things. I mean, this guy, he came up here last November, fell in love with it. He came to a game. They offered him that same weekend. Then he came back again in January. He was here on March 9th for his third visit, and now he's coming back again for an official visit. Very quick turnaround since his last time here. So I think uh, I think there's a lot to feel positive about there with, with Ty Kiss Crawford. I really like what they're doing with with uh, offensive line recruiting right now just based on, you know, last year was was good. I think they, they finished really strong, didn't really get off to a, a super strong start, but, you know, ended up getting Latham and Rathke and Bo Lemur, of, co- of course. Uh, Lemur was uh, uh, early, uh, jumped on. And then uh, Ricky Stromberg, I think, was, you know, kind of a surprise guy, a guy that really uh, jumped up the rankings uh, in his senior year. But there wasn't just like a whole lot of flash, you know, to it. Uh, sure. Whereas you had wide receiver, they're just raking them in, you know, and cornerback yeah. and, and, and stuff like that. So I think that if they're able to really boost it this year, what do you think they'll bring in, three this year? Uh, probably four. four. Right now I think four would be three, great because – But I you, bet they get four. Right. You look at uh, – on your big red board, um, there's a lot of – big time names. I mean, just in the city of Memphis alone, there's, there's like yeah. four guys right there that, that are, that are very well regarded prospects. Of course, you mentioned Crawford, Garrett Hayes has been up here, I guess a couple of times. Uh, yeah. what, what, do you, what do you think about the, the whole shape of offensive line recruiting? Cause that's something that people, I mean, people are, I guess they were a little concerned last year. I thought they ended up closing out pretty good though. Yeah, I did too. I think the only thing they were missing was, like you said, that that high school guy who was maybe a four star type mm-hmm. guy. Which really, technically, they did get that. Stromberg and, and yeah. Ricky. Yeah, but I think we were the only one listed as a four star. But yeah, I get your point. I think they're swinging for the fences. Obviously, you mentioned what they're doing in Memphis with, you know, guys like Chris Morris, uh, uh, Amari Thomas, who can play defense or offense for you. Ray Curry, I think you're still in good shape there. They've had Marcus uh, Henderson up here a few times, and you also mentioned Garrett Hayes, who, by the way, I would keep an eye on this. It, it's not confirmed yet, but look for him to be uh, setting up that official visit pretty soon. Wouldn't surprise me if he's the first weekend in May, mm-hmm. which obviously they've already already got Ryan Watts coming in that weekend, so that would be big news. Keep an eye on that to happen pretty uh, quickly. I think they're trying to set that up now, but uh, yeah, I'm with you, man. I think they're, they're targeting the right guys. Now you got to finish on them. You know, it's one thing to go out and, and put in a year's work or a year and a half of work on some of these mm-hmm. guys, but you got to come away with them too. Absolutely. Danny West joining us here on Hog Sports Live. I want to remind everybody there's several ways to uh, to watch the show or listen to the show. You can go on. Uh, we'll always have it up on hogsports.com, of course, after we go live here. But it's also going to be available on YouTube. You can go to Spotify, uh, Apple Podcasts, Stitcher. You'll be able to listen to it uh, on, on those platforms as well. So Danny West joining us here. And Danny, I want to, I want to get back to uh, another area that's a little bit of a concern to me too, just because, you know, we talked about the offensive line, and they actually did end up finishing pretty strong on the offensive line. They got four guys plus two guys from junior college. Now they're going to finally have 15 players on the offensive line. And, you know, people ask me, is Arkansas's offensive line going to be better than it was last year? And I think it starts with just the numbers, getting the numbers healthy. So I want to take you to the other side of the ball now and tell you about another area that's kind of concerning to me, and it's linebacker. Where do yep. they sit right now? We talked about Tron Folsom. There hasn't been a whole lot of movement since we you know, first started talking about him. Uh, but we talked about Tron Folsom, the graduate transfer linebacker from Troy, led them in tackles the last two years. But also in the 2020 cycle in recruiting, Martavius French, Bryson Eason are a couple of guys. They've got Jashad Stewart, who we think will probably play linebacker. Where are they at in not only recruiting for next year, but in the potential for getting a graduate transfer, maybe a late um, junior college guy that, that gets eligible or something like that? Yeah, well, it could be after spring ball. You know, you're, you're kind of hoping that maybe a few more names go into that transfer portal after uh, everybody gets done with their spring football. They still, uh, you know, they're keeping their eye on, on some JUCO guys right now, but Really, there's been no movement there. You know, everybody keeps talking about trying Folsom. I, I'm not seeing any movement whatsoever with that one right now. So, um, as far as 2020, I think you're still in great shape with the two Memphis guys, Bryson Eason, Martavius French, who you just mentioned there. Yeah. Aaron Moore is a kid out of Tennessee, Murfreesboro, yeah. 
um, Oakland High School in, in Murfreesboro. Aaron Moore came up here for the March 9th visit date. He's 6'3", 220. I really, really like this guy. I think they made a strong impression on him. Um, you know, I'm not ready to say they're they're number one on his list, but they're way up there for Aaron right now. And then you mentioned Jashad. Catrell Wallace is an outside linebacker defensive end. I would probably project him to stay on uh, on the defensive line in college. He's got a frame to fill out. Um, you know, I'm not saying he's Jamal Anderson, but that's kind of who he reminds you of. He's just long and lean right now. Putting on weight should be no problem for Cottrell. And by the way, he'll be here this weekend, so keep an eye on that one. But they've had some four-star guys up here, man. They, yeah. You know, people forget Brennan Scott came up a, a couple of weekends ago. Brandon Williams, a kid out of New Orleans, came there last year, I believe, came to camp. He's another four-star guy, so... Uh, you're in the top five for Prince Dorba, a kid at Highland Park High School in Dallas where you've had some success. So, uh, you know, they're still in the ball game, but the real key there is those two Memphis guys. They've put in so much work for Bryson and Martavius that you've got to come away with at least one of them, preferably both in this mm-hmm. year's class. Danny West joining us here. Let's get to a couple of questions. We don't have a lot of questions. We have comments, but uh, not a whole lot of questions. Dylan Jackson wants to know, can we get a way too early prediction for wins and losses next year for the football season? And I kind of laid out the other day five reasons why Arkansas can get to a bowl game. So, for me personally, I'm thinking like six wins is a distinct possibility when you consider they've upgraded the quarterback position with Ben Hicks and Nick Starkle. And we'll get to that question in a minute, Corey Dix. Uh, they've upgraded that. They've uh, – They've got more playmakers. I mean, they didn't have a guy as talented as Trey Knox last year on the roster. So uh, you've upgraded that position. And also Hudson Henry coming in. Shamar Nash is here early. I think Traylon Burks is going to – I think we both agree Traylon Burks can have an impact next year. Uh, Rakeem Boyd, a full year of being healthy right from the get-go, you know, coming off his shoulder surgery. You know, last year he just got there, what, five days before camp started, if that. Yeah. And and then added 15 pounds real quick and really didn't get going until Devois got hurt. Uh, and then hopefully Devil will stay healthy. And Devil has trimmed up. I mean, he looked trimmed up last year. He's trimmed up even more this year. He looks so. good. Yeah, he, he looks, looks really good. quick to me right now. Yeah, yeah, I think so. I'm anxious to see um, all those guys. Although Devil won't be out there. Um, oh, well, he might be out there. He wasn't out there the last couple of practices, but I guess he might be out there. But Rakeem definitely won't be out there. Um, so they've got more play. I think the the concerns have to be, you know, linebacker. They can't afford to have any injuries at linebacker. They're going to be talented at cornerback, but they're still going to be a little young, you know. So you still got some questions yeah. on defense. So it might come down to to outscoring at some point and and trying to get lucky and keep some guys healthy. Really, um, hey, I wanted to ask you, Danny. Well, go ahead and give your prediction real quick on uh, on what you think. Way too <laughs> way, way too early prediction. Way on, way too early. Way way too early. I, I'll just say this. I, I'll say there's three games that come to mind as really pivotal. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think Ole Miss probably takes another step back this year. That's a winnable game on paper. Now, we'll see when we get there, but the second week of the season wouldn't surprise me if they win that game. And then you've got two teams coming here that I would think are winnable. And, of course, I'm talking about Mississippi State on November 2nd, 3rd. And then, of course, the season finale uh, in Little Rock this year against Missouri. So you've got to go 4-0 in non-conference. I think they can. They should. We'll see, but... From there, I think you can win two of those three games I just mentioned to get to six. That's that's just way, way too early, but I think that's possible. I think it's doable. Well, and like we were saying the other day, I mean, don't get the crap kicked out of you also. Let's not just – let's yeah, not forget that. Cute. Like, don't have those games where you just get the doors blown off. You mentioned two teams there at the end you think Arkansas might have a shot against, so they lost 52-6 to six and 39 – what was it, 39? 38-0. 38-0. Oh. I mean – that would be, certainly be a turnaround if they were to pull off those two games. Of course, oh, they yeah. got different situations at quarterback than they had last year. Uh, Donnie Burrow says, awesome show. Appreciate that, Donnie. I want to remind anybody else, if you think this is an awesome show, throw us the thumbs up. Casey Dick, or excuse me, Corey Dix. <laughs> I was about to Casey say Dick, a blast from the show, past from old Casey. <laughs> yeah, uh, Corey Dix wants to know on the quarterback situation, Hicks or Starkle, assuming KJ will redshirt. So, The way it usually works with freshman quarterbacks, and we've talked about this a lot, is if you don't enroll early, the chances of you starting, and I'm talking about across Division I football, across FBS level, I should say, the odds of you starting are 
I couldn't find anybody. And I looked way back. I was looking back like Philip Rivers and Quincy Carter. I couldn't find anybody that didn't enroll in the spring and that started. And really the only guys that did start game one who were true freshmen were uh, Philip Rivers, Quincy Carter, uh, Matt Barkley at USC, and uh, oh, the guy at UCLA right now, Josh Rosen. Those guys, but they all enrolled in the spring and they started from the first game. But those guys were all like five-star recruits. Uh, I don't know what mm-hmm. Philip Rivers was. Quincy Carter was like 22 years old or something because he came in from baseball. Uh, so you know, it's it's a little bit. It, now that's not to say that he can't come in at some point and take over. That's I'm not saying that because that happens. There are plenty of examples of that. But day one, probably not. Uh, so yeah, between and you're talking about Starkle there. No, I'm talking about KJ. Starkle has oh, okay. a, Starkle has a legit shot. Starkle has yeah. a shot to come in and start. I mean, he threw for 1,700 yards last year – or, excuse me, the year before last as a starter. Uh, yes. Lost a job to Kellen Mond last year. But this is a guy as a redshirt freshman under a previous head coach, won the starting job at Texas A&M, and had ankle injury. I guess he broke his ankle, but threw for 1,700 yards. The last game as a starter, threw for 499 yards, four touchdowns, and interception. I would take that if I were Arkansas. Uh, he's got a lot of ability. Hicks is getting to jump on him. Hicks didn't compete on the biggest level as Starkle did, but – Still threw for 3,500 yards, 33 touchdowns, 12 interceptions. I think it's going to be really, really close. And, in fact, I could see it going back and forth before they settle on somebody early. And not in a bad way, not because they the guys aren't getting it done, but maybe because they're like, well, both these guys are doing pretty good early on in the season. What do you think? What if you run into a situation like we just talked about the schedule, right? You open with mm-hmm. Portland State. You go to Ole Miss. What if you win that game? And I, with Ben Hicks starting, and yeah. let's say he starts. You, want to rock you go 2-0. Yeah. You get three and O Colorado State, San Jose State. Let's say you're four and O with Ben Hicks, and then you go to A and M. Then you have to go to Kentucky, then Auburn, Alabama. You hit that stretch there. What if things aren't going the way they were, you mm-hmm. know, a few weeks ago? Is that when maybe they make a switch and and try? I don't know. I mean, you would hope he just carries it, right? Whoever gets yeah. the job would just keep rolling. But I could see something like that happening with the way the. Uh, the early non-conference is shaping up. I could see that, you know, fourth, fifth week maybe being a, a time for a change. But I'm with you on all that. I agree. Donnie Burrows back again with uh, what's the status of T.J. Hammonds. And Danny, I kind of mentioned this the other day on drive time, and they all acted crazy. But I was just bringing up Chad Morris's language when he was talking about T.J. because he was just kind of like, oh, I don't know. I don't know what he's going to do. You know, didn't ever have anything definitive, yeah. which tells me that if you if you say that, then, you know, there's something that you're not allowed to say, you know. Yeah. And so I always compare it to, with Chad, the way he talks, you have to watch his language, to a horror film. If the guy's head isn't cut off and he's not bursting flames, <laughs> and he could always come back. Uh, so Chad never said he's not absolutely with the team, you know. So what do you, what do you yeah. think? TJ has a possibility of coming back maybe? I think I think TJ is planning on coming back. I really do. Now mm-hmm. we'll see how that shapes up on Arkansas's end of things. If if he's got everything squared away, I would expect him back. Now, yeah. Well, they don't they don't need running back, so that's good. Yeah, not at all, <laughs> right? Yeah. Man, they need somebody to tote the ball in practice. We were talking about. They may need you out there. At some I know. Point. My gosh, how bad do they miss a guy like Connor McPherson? And people who don't know about Connor McPherson, but this guy. Never got hurt or never got Workhorse seriously hurt. And if he did get hurt, I mean, he would carry the ball in practice in spring. I mean, this is a guy that um, you need a guy like that in practice that, you know, <laughs> maybe he's not going to play for you on game day, but in practice he's just as important just because he gives you a good look. That's a tough dude right there, man. Yeah. I wouldn't want to wrestle old McPherson. <laughs> he's tough as nails. Yeah. But, yeah, McPherson, I mean, a great dude too. I think he keeps up with us on Hog Sports, to be honest with you. So, good. shout out to Connor. Yeah. So, Mike Cleveland wants to know if you can talk a little bit about basketball recruiting. A lot of interesting things are going on with basketball. Of course, there's word that, you know, Mike and uh, Hunter Yurichek have met uh, at the Blessings on Monday. I guess that's just yesterday. Time's flying. And then um, yeah, there's all kinds of rumors about player transfer stuff. Will Mike be retained or not? Uh, let's kind of circumvent that a little bit and get straight to just the recruiting talk because I think all of that stuff's still very much in the air my gut kind of says not going to make a change, but I don't know. I mean, I think it's very 50. One day I'm thinking they're not going to make a change. The next day I think they might make a change, but let's go around that. Go ahead. The the more, the more it drags on. I mean, the the less you think it's going to happen, right? Yeah. I mean, mean, they didn't, they didn't wait. Wouldn't it have happened already? 
they didn't wait a, waste a lot of time with Avery. You know, Johnson yeah, at, that's at, true. Uh, at at Alabama, they lost their, their game in the NIT, and the next thing you know, there's you know the rumors are out there, and then you know. Um, there we go. So, uh, just to hit on uh, basketball recruiting real quick, if you don't mind, Danny, we got a, a little bit yeah, of time it, left. Yeah, I think it's funny. You know, everybody's kind of complaining about the basketball class right now. Well, we don't have any, you know, great guys coming in. On one hand, yeah, that's true. But on the other hand, everybody's, you know, fire Mike. Mm-hmm. It's kind of counter counterproductive there. But uh, yeah, you still got Sean Stith coming in this weekend for an official visit. Again, a JUCO guy out of Saddleback Community College. He's originally from Oakland, California. Mm-hmm. So 6'8", 255, big old guy. So you would like to think that they could wrap him up this weekend. They kind of need a shot in the arm right now. Any kind of positive momentum right now would be big for them. So, you know, hopefully for their sake, they can get him on board. We'll see what happens with Raymond Hawkins this coming Saturday. He's set to make his decision. I still expect that to be Buffalo. Mm-hmm. I think they've done a really good job with him. But, again, he's, he's still promised Arkansas an official even after he commits. So, um, you know, be looking for that. Outside of that, man, I wish I had better news for y'all, but there's just there's not a lot out there right now. And that's yeah. the problem you run into. Uh, like you talked about last Saturday, it, it, there is a sense that they're kind of late. late. Yes. A little bit late in the game right now, and you, you start to look around. I mean, typically you it's hard to find talent in the springtime anyway, but mm-hmm. especially when you get a late start on trying to find the talent in the spring. I mean, it's just – I don't know. I think it's going to be really tough for them to come away with uh, a group that people just rave about. You know, it's going to be they're going to need to get lucky Mm -hmm. at some point. Maybe that's a transfer. You're starting to see some guys enter, you know, throw their names out there as potential transfers now. So maybe that works out for them. But now you've put yourself in a position where you have to kind of bank on getting lucky a little bit. Mm -hmm. Um, Matthew Cromer wants to know if they kind of moved off Jacoby Criswell or do they just feel better about the guys that they're recruiting? I think they feel better about some of the other guys that they're recruiting, Danny. I mean, I think you probably have the same opinion. It's just I like Criswell a lot. I think he's got a big oh, yeah. arm. He's athletic. But it feels like they're just going in a different direction there. Yeah, uh, I would I would say it that way. I think that's probably the best way to say it. Uh, the writing is kind of on the wall when, when Jacoby comes out and lists uh, a bunch of visits that he's going to take. Obviously, Arkansas is not in, you know, mentioned in any of those trips and uh, doesn't seem to be a whole lot of traction there at this mm-hmm. point. So, you know, we'll see how that works out. They're on some really good ones, though. So obviously, Chandler Morris, you've got Shane Hillingworth coming in for an official visit next weekend or for the April 6th uh, weekend. So he's a four-star guy. You're still in the boat with uh, uh, Haynes King down in Longview, Texas. So Michael Wright, the kid out of Atlanta that you like pretty – I think you do. I don't want to speak for you, but I think you like Michael Wright on film. So, Mm -hmm. you know, they're still in in the ballgame for some of these guys. All right, Danny. I think we pretty much got you uh, on recruiting questions. But – I want to thank you for joining us. We'll see you out at practice today. We'll have a, a ton of content. Yeah. Danny will have some stuff out of practice, some thoughts, and and uh, we'll really blow out today's coverage. So Yeah, let's get after it. All right, man. Thanks for joining us. All right, we'll see you. All right, that was Danny West joining us. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead and answer a couple of these last questions here. Um, Jeremy Brighton asks, is Starkle have two years left? Yes, yeah, Starkle has two years left. Cody Tober answers that. Donnie Butts answers it. Brad Glass, is Thomas Muldrow still on the team? Thomas Muldrow, I don't think so. Let me see real quick. Let me get this roster out. Alphabetical, Muldrow. No, no, it doesn't look like he is. All right, everybody, I want to thank everybody for joining us here today. Um, I want to remind you, go ahead and throw us that thumbs up if you haven't. Let's go ahead and get this graphic up so you know how to – pay attention to us. Uh, You can watch on Facebook Live, which you're doing right now, YouTube, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher. Uh, So there's plenty of different ways to watch. I want to encourage you to go ahead and throw us a thumbs up if you haven't already. Share the video, follow, comment. If you're on podcast, be sure to throw us five stars and subscribe to the page. And we'll be back with you guys soon. Be sure to go to Hog Sports today after practice. There's going to be tons of content, video, all of that kind of stuff. We didn't even get into the Justice Hill discussion. 
Will Justice Hill be out there and what position will he be playing? So plenty of stuff going on with Razorback football. Baseball team plays against Missouri State at 6.30 tonight. Basketball, a lot of stuff up in the air. So we're going to go ahead and sign off. I want to thank everybody for joining us today. This has been Trey Biddy with hogsports.com, and we'll catch you next time.